In this video, I am going to discuss about understanding the different types of learning and its classroom applications. Learning is defined as the process of bringing out relatively a permanent change in the behavior of an organism. May be classified into number of categories depending upon the domain or specific area of the behavior in which changes are introduced. In terms of methods of techniques that are employed for the introduction of behavioral changes. If we follow the former criteria, learning can be classified as verbal learning, learning of motor skill, affective learning, cognitive learning. In terms of later criterion, we may categorize learning as trial and error learning, classical conditioning, operant conditioning, chain learning, shaping, learning through generalization, learning through discrimination, serial learning, associate learning, etc. and so on. Learning according to the development of body organs. Such type of learning can be broadly classified into two categories, motor learning and additional learning. Motor learning involves motor and muscular parts of the body. Motor learning is also of two. One is sensory motor learning and perceptual motor learning. Sensory motor learning is related to the acquisition of simple habits through sense organs. Learning of skill in nursery schools, playground is a good example of sensory motor learning. Perceptual motor learning is related to the acquisition of social habits and complex motor skills. Dancing, cycling, handwriting, etc. are some examples of perceptual motor learning. It is very much objective in nature. Ideational learning. In this type of learning, muscular or motor activity is not needed. It is related to the acquisition of concepts, ideas and mental association. This type of learning is mostly subjective in nature. Ideational learning is can be also classified into the following categories perceptual learning, conceptual learning, associative learning and imaginative learning. Perceptual learning which is mostly comes through the senses. Learning through concrete material, learning through written or spoken symbol, drawing a picture or some examples of perceptual learning. Conceptual learning is the other name of abstract learning. It is related to the acquisition of concepts and abstract ideas. Associative learning is learn incidentally or by connecting two different types of learning. Prescribed sequence is followed while linking one information with the other. Imaginative learning is a process by which things of the past, present and future are given in a definite form. It involves the acquisition of images and understanding of the things beyond the normal range of sensory experience. Learning according to the domains of behavior involved. Domains of human behavior are three, cognitive, affective and psychomotor. So learning can also be classified in these three categories, cognitive learning, attitudinal learning and skill learning. Cognitive learning is related to the acquisition of knowledge, understanding of concepts, interrelations of various concepts and ideas. This type of learning is 90% emphasis in the classroom. Here only mind is brought into action. When this type of learning is well developed, a learner is able to generalize and evaluate concepts as well as personal experience. Attitude in learning is attitude, values and social system are also learned by the individual. This type of learning begins with the feeling of belongingness of a person to his group. How a person should react to these others in the various types of emotional situation is a result of this type of learning. Skill learning Skill learning and habit formation Motor behavior of the individual along with feeling is involved here. Practice is an important aspect of this type of learning. Reading, writing, playing etc. or certain game or doing some physical job with perfection is a result of this type of learning. Robert Gagne, theory of hierarchical learning proposed all learning were not alike. He divided learning into eight types or categories and arrange them in a hierarchy because each kind of learning begins with a different capability for performance. The mastery attained in performance of one time becomes the prerequisite for the next higher type of learning. The varieties of learning that Gagne distinguished are signal learning. The individual learns to make a general response to a signal. This is similar to the classical condition response of Pavlo. Stimulus response learning. The learner acquires the precise response to discriminate stimulus. 
what is learned here may be connection as indicated by thrombin or discriminated by operon skinner chain learning in this what is acquired is a chain of two or more stimulus and response connections the conditions for acquiring this have been elaborated by skinner verbal association learning this is the learning of chains that are verbal the connections for this resemble those for other chains like motor chain discrimination learning the individual learns to discriminate and make a different identifying response to as many stimuli that may resemble each other in physical appearance concept learning the learner learns to give a common response to the class of stimuli that may so differ from each other widely in physical appearance but have some connections or characteristics or attributes rule learning a rule is a chain of two or more concepts it helps control behavior in the manner suggested by verbalized rule of the form problem solving it is a kind of learning that records the internal events that are usually called thinking two or more previously acquired rules are somehow combined to produce a new capability that depends on higher order rule according to gagne one should master a lower order learning before attempting to learn the next higher order learning students may consult the given reference for further thank you